We begin in a post-apocalyptic, dystopian, alternate version of Earth, in which a pandemic of a deadly, mutated strain of the H5N1 virus, or bird flu disease, nearly wiped out mankind in the year 2068. The release of a counter virus, cultivated to destroy the disease's avian carriers in a desperate attempt to stop its spread, ended up backfiring, as birds who resisted the counter virus instead developed human level intelligence. War soon broke out between the newly uplifted birds and the remnants of humanity, resulting in birds emerging as the planet's new dominant life forms, while humans continued to succumb to the disease. Following several terrorist attacks by a human insurgency, all remaining humans have been forced to live in the wilderness away from civilization in a form of apartheid-like segregation, while the birds have taken their place in society. In the Japanese town of Little Dove, Hachiman City, long after open warfare between humans and birds has ended, society has adjusted to the avian conquest, though with minor bird-related cultural changes, such as Legumentine's Day, an amalgamation of the traditions of Valentine's Day and Setsuban, the Japanese bean-throwing festival. The terms War Dove and War Hawk have been repurposed as labels for two opposing political factions divided over the ongoing mutual hostility between birds and the human minority, the altruistic Dove Party, who advocate for cooperation and peace between the two groups, and the militant Hawk Party, whose goal is to exterminate humanity altogether, with their respective schools of thought dominating much of the world's politics. On April 8, 2188, Hyoko Tasaka, a boisterous, hunter-gatherer, human teenage girl living alone inside of a cave in the wilderness, who was invited to attend the prestigious and otherwise birds-only St. Pigeonations Institute, starts her second year of high school. After a hectic and surreal freshman year of attendance at Pigeonations, Hyoko has grown accustomed to the confusion of being the only human in a school full of birds and is looking forward to her sophomore year. Other students include Ryota Kawara, a rock dove who's Hyoko's sickly but hard-working childhood friend, Sakuya Labelle Shiragane, a fantail pigeon and snobbish French aristocrat, Sakuya's older half-brother, Yuya Sakazaki, a popular and flirtatious but strangely secretive fantail pigeon, Nageki Fujishiro, a quiet, bookish morning dove who never seemed to leave the library, San Oka, an athletic, hyperactive fantail pigeon who's obsessed with pudding, and Ingel Higure, an eccentric Luzon bleeding heart who behaves as if he were in some kind of fantasy role-playing game. Kazuaki Nanaki, a kind but narcoleptic button quail is Hyoko's homeroom teacher, Shu Iwamine, a creepy, antisocial chukar partridge serves as the school's doctor, and Uzami Koshiba is a local no-nonsense java sparrow who sells takoyaki, a ball-shaped Japanese snack food. Hyoko begins to have recurring dreams of her younger self and Ryota, with her parents lying dead in front of an unfamiliar house, where a mysterious man approaches them, promising to grant any wish that they make. On September 2, she decides to check on Ryota, who had gone to the infirmary earlier that day. The next morning, she fails to show up for class. Kazuaki asks Ryota to retrieve their class's box of print handouts, and upon retrieving it, blood is discovered leaking from a corner of the box. Ryota opens the lid and finds that the box contains Hyoko's severed head. A siren sounds, and there's an order to evacuate to the school's gymnasium, where Ryota overhears other students mention that more pieces of a human corpse were found in the other print boxes. Doubting the headmaster's broadcasted announcement explaining that a natural disaster is occurring, Ryota and Sakuya resolve to figure out the identity of Hyoko's killer, leaving the gymnasium and discovering a large metal dome surrounding the entire school grounds. Upon returning to their classroom and finding the bloody print box empty, Yuya explains that Hyoko's body has been gathered in the chemistry lab, where Shu performs an autopsy concluding that Hyoko died of asphyxiation, caused by illness or poison, with the dismemberment occurring afterwards. Assisted by the school janitor, Mr. One, and pursued by a grotesque scarecrow-like machine, called Labor Nine, which suddenly appears on the school grounds, Ryota and Sakuya begin investigating the dome and Hyoko's murder. They visit the lab and compare alibis. Shu, who Ryota distrusts, cryptically asks if Ryota has forgotten anything important, to which he replies that he hasn't. Upon investigating the headmaster's office, they discover that he's also been poisoned to death, with his earlier announcement being merely pre-recorded footage. They also find a computer and a pair of documents, one titled, The Human Representative, and the other torn and mostly unreadable, titled, Operation Hatiful. 
The human representative reveals orders that if Hyoko, a symbol of humanity, were to die, the campus would be sealed off, with the birds inside handed over to humans as sacrifices when the dome is lifted 12 hours after her death is reported. Something confirmed when the computer is used to open a small hatch in the dome and some students are shot dead as they attempt to flee by humans gathering outside. In trying to find a way to escape before the dome rises, Ryota and Sakuya uncover records in the library mentioning a medical center that was shut down due to a fire, and that Nageki, whom Ryota previously encountered in the library, died in that fire, revealing him to be a ghost. Sakuya deduces that an unused building on campus was the medical center, and after investigating, they find its basement sealed off, before encountering Engel, who recalls seeing Hyoko go into the infirmary the day before, contradicting Yuya and Shu's shared alibi. As Ryota searches the infirmary for clues, he finds medical records for himself, Hyoko, Nageki, and Sakuya, but is knocked unconscious by a mysterious assailant immediately after. When he regains consciousness, he discovers Hyoko's bloody student ID on the floor. Now with concrete evidence, Ryota returns to the chemistry lab to confront Shu and Yuya, only to find that they're no longer there, and Sakuya is planning to confront them alone. Ryota then returns to the infirmary, as Yuya shields Sakuya from Shu's attempts to kill him, before Shu tells Ryota that he'll be waiting for him in the medical center's basement, and escapes with Labor 9, which he's revealed to be in control of. Yuya apologizes, affirming that while neither he nor Shu killed Hyoko, they were the ones who dismembered her, and asks to speak to Sakuya alone. He then reveals that they're full-blooded siblings, with Shu using knowledge of Sakuya's true heritage to blackmail Yuya into assisting him. Yuya seemingly dies, due to Shu's scalpel having been laced with the same neurotoxin that killed the headmaster, leaving Sakuya in a state of shock. Ryota, searching for a way into the medical center basement, seeks out Nageki in the library to ask him about his death. Upon discovering additional documents revealing that Operation Hatiful was Hawk Party project involving the development of anti-human biological weapons using the basement as an experimental facility, with focus on strain of the 5 and 1 almost immediately lethal to humans, dubbed the Charon virus, Nageki recalls that the fire was caused by him, committing suicide by self-immolation, after months of forced experimentation, in order to destroy and remove any trace of the virus, which was isolated within his body, and the prior to his death, he often saw researchers going into the chemistry preparation room. Ryota, Kazuaki, and Engel discover a hidden entrance in the room, and make their way into the medical center's basement through it, encountering Labor 9 and electrocuting it using a stun gun given to Ryota earlier by Mr. One. They confront Shu, who imprisons Kazuaki and Engel, leaving them to die of poison gas before leading Ryota deeper into the basement facility. Meanwhile, San comforts Sakuya on the loss of Yuya, before the two of them proceed into the basement, arriving just in time to break Engel and Kazuaki out of the prison. Alone with Shu, Ryota finally remembers what he'd forgotten due to the traumatic nature of the events. He recognizes the doctor as the man who promised to grant his childhood wish for peace between birds and humans, after he and Hyoko witnessed a human terrorist incident at a bird orphanage, in which Hyoko's parents, who were crisis negotiators, were killed, and that Hyoko died when she visited him yesterday in the infirmary. Shu reveals that her cause of death was the Charon virus, after coming into contact with Ryota, as Shu had introduced the virus into Ryota's body through grafts from Nagaki's remains, for the purpose of using him to exterminate humanity, seeking to grant Ryota's childhood wish using an extreme method, reasoning that if humans are wiped out, there can be no more fighting between them and birds. Shu then remarks that Labor 9 was powered by Hyoko's brain, which he harvested from her corpse, and is now irreversibly damaged from Ryota's stun gun. Deeply distraught after these revelations, Ryota submits to Shu's offer to turn him into a living weapon of mass destruction, and a struggle ensues, during which the rest of the group, along with Hyoko's spirit, intervenes, bringing Ryota back to his senses. Ryota then asks Shu why he decided to grant his wish, and Shu reveals that he worked with Ryota's now deceased father, Ryuji, whom he secretly had great affection and admiration for, and that he was motivated by Ryuji's dying request, to do something for his son. Shu admits defeat, and offers to lead everyone out of the school through a safe passage, but Kazuaki pulls out a gun and shoots him as the group prepares to escape. Shu then recalls that Nagaki's only relative, his adoptive brother, was, like Kazuaki, a quail. 
The human terrorist incident occurred at Kazuaki and Nagaki's orphanage and left them as the only survivors. Witnessing Nagaki's subsequent suicide drove Kazuaki insane, leading him to fake his own death, assume a new identity, and join the school's faculty to take revenge against Shu, the head of Operation Hatiful. Ryota, channeling Nagaki's spirit, eases Kazuaki's guilt and convinces him to move on. They reunite with the rest of the group and safely exit the school, together with the other students and faculty brought there by Mr. One. However Ryota, now completely infected with the Charon virus, elects to stay behind in cryonic storage until a cure is found. Sakuya vows to come back for Ryota, who's able to again communicate with Hyoko's spirit within the remnants of Labor 9, explaining to her the day's events. Afterward, Sakuya discovers that Yuya survived being poisoned long enough to receive an antidote and recover, and with Shu's cooperation, a cure for the Charon virus is developed, which will allow Ryota to be revived and return to his normal life.